Do you guys know Sir Walter Raleigh? Yeah. Didn't he invent the cigarette? He did. <laughs> he did. But it used to come in cans, right? So we used to call up the corner store and we'd go, Stuart Wilson and I, we'd go, you got Sir Walter Raleigh in can? Yeah, and we say, what? Let him out! <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, book nine. So we're, like, we've gone down to hell and we're coming back out at this point, right? This is Diverted Divigations. This whole book, book nine, Diverted Divigations, is about, um, sorry, I'm a little, a little athletic. It's all right. It's all right. Um, it's about <laughs> modes of transport. And this, this, so some of the modes of transport in this poem, which happen to be modes of writing, are called uh, meandering, roving, drifting, blundering. Read that one. <laughs> you want to hear blundering? Oh, yeah. I was going to read gallivanting. Oh, that might be better. Gallivanting is very good. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll do both. Twist my arm. Canto 52, blundering. Unexpected entrances into passages reeking of bad taste often compromise even devoted instabilities. Inexcusable repetitions render them fodder for egregious translations into fallacious resemblances to poetry previously established in defense of overdone erections trussed up for the holiday. You never know what god-awful combination of unintentional retorts will find their way into stories of carnal anxieties, wars of dubious intent. The rising death toll shreds protestations of democratic vistas, inevitable remedy for what ails you. Too late for love's yearly eruption to do more than guarantee profitable annual terminations. Anyway, they don't look like they come from Dallas, leaving dusky roots to spread beyond wordy genetic urgencies. Tripping is then a tactical contingency under circumstances dictated more by mental shortcomings dazzled by nifty blueprints for perfectly executed finales than deep binding with other paths past brain locks looking a lot like Virgilian paradise dumps hidden in long grass. Stepping in one of those tenders pastoral affections in shades of lingering emissions like some errant, if insidious, serendipity clinging to pedal extremities, stinking of nature's insistent resolution into squishy excretions, reminder of telic dreams illusory wind-up in CBC-grade moral declamations. <laughs> I thought you might laugh at that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Squishy ex oh, never mind. <laughs> I'm going to read that sentence again. Stepping into one of those, these are Virgilian paradise dumps, okay, in the grass. Stepping into I'm one of those. Still thinking about that. What? I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> Stepping in one of those tenders pastoral affections and shades of lingering emissions like some errant if insidious serendipity clinging to pedal extremities, stinking of nature's insistent resolution into squishy excretions, reminder of telic dreams illusory wind-up in CBC-grade moral declamations. Blind to abruptly broken joint is no excuse for unseemly elegance. Clumsily, suddenly, figures a way out is not just dazzling, but dependent on diversionary adumbrations and multiple unresolved mortality encounters. It doesn't add up stumbles into reassuring enunciations of forthcoming redemptive architectural investments soothing the waters. And sudden walls can be a problem, especially when dazzled, Fallen from the arms of Raz renders further blank, if not null, though some have been known to wind up in percolating extensions and boogie apparitions depending on how the bones tumble and fall and tumble in the big black bowl.
gallivanting. We're back to Sir Walter Raleigh. I'm going to throw myself on the beer here. Everybody, do you all know the story? Like, these stories, I mean, you think these stories are eternal, right? But they, they're not. So everybody knows about Walter Raleigh and Queen Elizabeth. And I know you know me. You're of a certain age. Your hair, I can tell by your hair. <laughs> Sir Walter Raleigh's walking across the Tower of London one day or something, right? You know this story? You don't know this story? No. And Queen Elizabeth, this is not true, it's a lie, but it's like George Washington and the cherry tree. We all learned it, right? Queen Elizabeth's walking along and there's like a big mud puddle and Sir Walter Raleigh flips off his cloak and throws it over the mud He wasn't puddle. a sir then. What? He wasn't, he wasn't a, a sir, that's right, he was just Walter Raleigh. Walt. And in front of the Queen, <laughs> so that when she steps in the mud puddle, she steps on his cloak and she doesn't get her boot mud. The story I heard was she goes right down up to her neck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not one with Stuart Granger and, uh, in the jungle. And he throws her one of those things off the palm tree. No, the gallivanting. Canto 54 gallivanting. Sir Walter Raleigh, Walter Raleigh, who was later Sir Walter Raleigh, also founded the, colon the first colony in North America, the English colony in North America at Roanoke, which when they came back was gone. This, <laughs> actually, Another oh, never mind, I'm going to get it. Smoked it all. Yeah, so Canto 54, Gallivanting. Razamituti deviations leading to untoward expectations count as incentives to engage lexical assignations in awkward postures that may increase stimulation and lead to explosive moments, determined evasion of measured paces. It's not just for the fun of it, either. Muddy cloaks linger in ravaged echoes of royal feet, vulgar puddles and rolling heads bobbing with other detritus in the murky water, beyond lost memories, gallant garments, regal petal salvation, misplaced along with tobacco in cans and Roanoke. Other bobbings have been known to yield multiplicities of amorous salivation, too. No mere rump apparition, but genuine celestial atavism, yielding unregulated repetition formations in prophetic postures of evaporating peach cleft redemption. Then the cloak re-enters, virtually indistinguishable from the night sky all over town, inviting us to step high and fine into the sudden music piping somewhere in the distance. Tearing open the firmament, salvage operations emerge from the puddle, making way for the dawn before the dawn. An organic intuitions begin to become Fred not you. Fred has <coughs> limbed by leaking light in the abrupt sky a stare, a star, or even a stunt hoof around in embryonic compositional vagaries of larval disintegration, while gallant gestures undone leave the royal foot awash in the muck of night. The joke is on the house rollicking in its evasive resemblance to canned pranks liberated into whatever's after the end no one remembers. Let him out! Let him out! it cries, while the skies gathering into portentous aberrations of inviolable hilarity trip the light fandango through puddled dark and smoke-hole glories. <laughs>